in today's game development world where you see projects that are built for the love of the idea and the passion for the development of the game. I'm not saying that every game has no passion, but money is a huge factor behind most things where it's like, how can we monetize this? How can we advertise this? How can we make this acceptable to the most amount of people so that we get the most amount of money? A Plague's Tale, in a sense, does none of that, it seems. It seems like every bit of passion that went into this game came out in somewhere, whether it's the art, the sound, the animations, the, I mean, the fucking boss fights were super cool. It's so unique in the experience that you get while you're playing it that it doesn't feel like you're just a hack and slash going through like a hack and slash, right? Where you, all right, kill all this stuff and then you get to the end, right? It doesn't feel like just a stealth game where it's like, all right, sneak past everything and then you get to the end, right? Um, the big goal in mind isn't like, oh, we have to stop this whole thing from happening. The whole thing that you're going through is we have to survive. We have to get to the next part. We have to survive to the next day. And to make that successfully work in a game has only been done a few times in the past. It's super rare, especially to this extent. I feel like this game has so much passion behind it, and you just feel that the whole time you're playing it. Um, Story-wise, it's, I mean, the whole time you're just guessing what's happening. And the only thing I would say about the story that could have been, I don't even know if it could have been better. It's just kind of something you have to accept. And once you get over that point, it the story is perfect. But... You have to really get over the whole idea of like, oh, wow, I'm sneaking behind a hundred people and they all just happen to look the other way. Like once you can wrap your mind or get your mind away from that idea of like, oh, this is way uh, extraordinary heroes in extraordinary circumstances, right? Like everybody's turning their back right when I need them to. If you can get away from that idea, the story that this game delivers is unfucking believable It is... It keeps you guessing. It keeps you wondering what's happening. It keeps you wondering who's your enemy and who's not. And I think that's really, really incredible stuff. Um, they do some really cool dichotomy stuff with uh, the dark rats hate fire, right? So the whole time with the dark rats, you are igniting fires. You're trying to get as many of these fires up so that you can pass by without getting eaten alive. And then towards about 75% into the game, all of a sudden you want as much darkness as possible so that these dark rats can form around you and create these weapons that you can use to take out your enemies. And then at the very end of the game, the white rats hate darkness. So what you're trying to do is extinguish the flames as fast as possible. So for the first 75% of the game, you're trying to light as many fires as possible, trying to get through everything as bright as possible. And then towards the very end, you're trying to get rid of all the fire so that your rats can overtake the others. Um... The sneaking around was awesome. Every single scene was just filled with different... It was in a different environment in every single scene, pretty much. If you think about when we're sneaking through the camp after Amicia gets captured versus when Hugo's get sneaking through uh, the, sl the, um, the slaughter dungeon, the, the jail, whatever it is... Um, it's just completely different scenes, and it, they even change the perspective of the camera so that you're shorter and closer to the ground. You feel more like a kid. You're sneaking in like little fucking crevices and cracks, and versus Amelia, where you're hiding behind full-blown barrels and crates and all that stuff. It's just awesome. Um, the progression system's super cool. You see that wheel unlock, and most people that play games like this understand that that wheel is like pretty much your progression bar, right? The more f filled out it is the better it's going to, like, the closer you are towards the end. So when we got the rock at the very beginning, we're like, all right, that's kind of cool. Um, I don't think we killed anybody in the first mission except for the one dude, which I'm going to get to in a second. But you get the rock, and then you get the fire, and then you get a way to put out the fire, and then you get a way to distract the rats, and then a way to kill an enemy instantly and, like, get a second chance at survival. So instead of doing what a lot of games do, where they give you armor and they give you new weapons and stuff like that to make the game... Um, make it feel like you're progressing somehow, you don't get, like, new weapons and new armor and stuff. You get to upgrade your current stuff, and then you get new upgrade trees, like the uh, alchemy tree, which is super cool. Um, and it just there's just such a natural progression to it, to where it's like, you're not this super-powered character that's trying to, like, take on an army one man at a time. Or, I mean, take on an army at a time by just being one person that's way overpowered. You're surviving and using your surroundings to make this happen. Um, boss fights, 
The first guy that we fought, super unique boss fight where you have to chip off his armor plates, and by the time you get him all the way down, he's like getting faster and faster because he's losing all the weight of his armor. And you get a little bit of background story about how his son was killed or uh, his child was killed. We don't know if it was a son or daughter, I don't think. I feel like it was a son. Um, and he's just... I don't know if he's a drunkard necessarily, but that's kind of the vibe I got. He's just crazy. Um, he's looking for death. He's, one of his lines that was super memorable to me was like, uh, bring me to see my son again or something like that when you're about to kill him with a rock. And it just... If you watch my reaction to when we did that fight, I was like visibly taken back by that story. And that's something that doesn't happen to me a lot. I'm usually very... Um, I guess taken... I, I'm usually pretty far away from the story that's going on. I'm not really wrapped up in it too much because a lot of games kind of screw you when you get it wrapped up in the story. Um, Nicholas, the second boss fight. Uh, maybe not the second, but the second one that I'm thinking of right now. Uh, that one was a little... That one was alright. I mean, it had cool ideas. You just have to extinguish all the flames. But if you realize that that's what you have to do, you pretty much just spend the whole game sprinting around listening to footsteps. And the footsteps weren't very good. So it sounded like he was a lot closer than he was most of the time. Uh, final boss fight. That's one of the most unique boss fights. I'm never going to forget that shit. It inspired me to fucking... I want to see a ton of designs off of that idea. Of like one central figure that's doing shit and like locking areas of the map down. And you can see it took a little bit for me to get into it. But once I realized that like a tower falls and now you can no longer stand where that tower fell. A... Um, he tunneled underground. So in a few seconds after that, the little delay... That area that you're standing on is going to become dangerous. And it just keeps locking down chunks and chunks of the map until there's very little room for you to stand. Um, and the whole time you're doing that, you have to keep... Uh, you have to keep the mindset of Hugo is going to send rats straight up the middle. So you have to clear that area. On top of that, after you send those rats, every pile of rats that he has is going to go straight up the center... Or straight up the sides wherever you made them land. It's just insane. There's so much to keep track of with that, and it was just such a good fight. Um, the gruesomeness, I mean, I think it's way too often that we see games today try and shy away from that stuff because a lot of people stop playing. If they see a hanging body, there's a lot of people in this world that are like, hey, this is too much for me. I don't want to play that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But this game does not shy away from it, and I really, really, really fucking respect the developers for doing that because they alienated a lot of the audience that just wouldn't make it through this story because of how gruesome it was when you're digging through bodies of that mass hanging and you're like and she says like it's sticky or something like that and he goes like i don't want to look down and she says don't look down like that's just insane the amount of gruesome and gore and stuff like that i'm just really happy that they actually put that stuff in because it adds a real depth to this that you wouldn't get otherwise um the redemption arc when you go back to the house to get the mother's um, elixir, where you actually see like some of the guards are laying there under lights, and you and you get to pick whether or not you kill them or not. And I mean, I personally went with kill them, obviously, but that's like a, a redemption arc for the entire game because at the very beginning you have no, you're fleeing, you're in full flee mode. You can't kill them, you can't really hide. I mean, you have to hide from them the whole time, but you're just fleeing. You're getting out of that area. So to make a comeback to that is just fucking insane. Um see art there's i mean i love the dark and um dark and grimy i guess is a good word for it type of stuff i think it's a really uh somebody mentioned bloodborne earlier bloodborne follows a very similar art style where it's very dark in most places and then very bright in some that and it's very bright in some areas that um again a dichotomy that just makes i don't know I think the lighting is very good in this game. I think the art's very good. Animations were good. Uh, there was not a lot of clipping, which is good to, I mean, look through. The only clipping actually I, that I can remember that really fucked with us was um, the armored guys, the heavily armored guys, right when we were walking up the steps towards the very end, their weapons were going into the stairs, and it was super hard to get in the, uh, in the thing. Reds, a lot of good reds were in the game. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, because when you put it in a very dark area and the reds stand out, I mean... Yeah, I'd say color choice and all that was very good, if that's what you're talking about. Um, overall, like I said, this is like the exact type of game I want to see. If 
you gave me a list of a thousand tags that I would try and make a developer like I would try and have a game developed personally for me it would have every tag that this game has and it would be almost exactly like this game it would be stealthy it would have an incredible story it would have incredibly uh, incredible art it would be dark and dim and seem hopeless at times and then at other times it would be lighthearted and humorous um, the characters in this game um, the characters that were in this game every single one of them that was introduced was interesting and I know I've been made that point multiple times but I'm trying to make this into a full full review here um, there wasn't a single character that they introduced that I was like eh, fuck him he's fine whatever every character that was in the game for more than a couple seconds was completely interesting um, I, I my favorite character was Roderick and they obviously gave did what they did to him and that was a very cool send-off um, his strength just pulled him through the whole thing and I think that was really cool um, other than that though I mean I don't know if we I think we pretty much covered everything about the game if I had to rate it on a scale out of 10 like nine and a half is where I'd put it obviously the pros are everything I listed the negatives is pretty much what I listed that you have to get over the idea of that these are um, you have to just not say every time and I know I did it while I was playing but you can't just say like oh every time I need to sneak around this corner all the guys turn their back to me it happens it's also a fucking video game like it's scripted yes but it's scripted anyways like that's what the game is about um, that's what all games are so once you get past that idea I think I think it's a perfect game you just have to be able to get around the idea of everything's gonna work out for you because if it didn't your game would end at the very beginning if this was realistic we would have died when we were trying to escape the castle all those dudes that just kept turning their backs to us while me uh, or Amicia Hugo and the mother were trying to sneak out if it was realistic that one of them would have went there they are and everybody would have fucking died like it would have been over so there's got to be some level of understanding there that this is a game this is meant for entertainment um so i'm gonna say nine nine and a half out of ten it could only be better by being longer by having more uh i would say weapon choices maybe maybe instead of just rocks but also i think it works really well the way they did it so i can't even complain about that very little to complain about i think everything was fucking awesome uh like i said whatever that studio releases in the future I'm going to buy, hands down. I don't care what it's about. It could be Nico Para Volume 7. I will buy that shit immediately, and I will play every second of it on stream. Um, I do appreciate everybody that did stop by and watch all of this, though, um, or even parts of it, whoever caught any of it, really. Uh, this is probably one of the first games that I've played that I've enjoyed to this extent live in front of people. So it's very cool to be able to look over at chat and see you guys reacting the same way I am or... Um, noticing something I didn't or anything like that. I just really, I think that adds a whole new level of streaming that I didn't really appreciate beforehand. So I do appreciate you guys being here. Um, it's been a six hour and 50 minute stream. We covered this game in two streams. Two days ago, we did an eight hour stream of it. And then today we did six hours and 50 minutes. So it's about a 13 hour play time, somewhere around there. 14 hour play time. Um, highly recommend. I know you guys watched it, but if anybody's just getting new, I mean, get this fucking game, play it. It's, it's great. Um, has been six hours, 50 minutes, though, so we are going to call the stream there. Appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, I'm going to hop on Minecraft. If you guys want to hop on, I'll be on there uh, probably in about an hour or so. And I'll be on all night. So, 